Invasive species are one of the leading causes of extinctions worldwide, and this is why governments try so hard to control them. Unfortunately, some people like to villainize invasive species, and they treat them badly just because they're invasive. It's not the animal's fault that it's been introduced into an ecosystem where it doesn't belong, and it's simply just trying to survive. One form of conservation bias is when a large amount of funding is channeled towards lovable and magnificent animals, instead of those perceived as strange or boring. As well as there being a conservation bias towards certain animals, there seems to be an invasive species bias too. For certain people, it's easier to kill large dangerous animals, and it's much harder to kill smaller fluffy ones. One of the worst invasive species around the world is the domesticated cat, and these animals are responsible for hundreds if not thousands of extinctions. It's estimated that free-ranging domestic cats kill around 1.3 to 4 billion birds each year, but for mammals it's a lot worse as they kill around 6.3 to 22.3 billion mammals each year. Cats were introduced into many parts of the world to control rodent numbers, and they have the biggest impact on small island ecosystems. Because cats are kept as pets around the world, they're not really seen as a pest or a problem, but in some areas they are causing major problems. In today's video, I will be going through some of the worst affected areas, and I will be going through a few species that are being wiped out by cats. Without further ado, we can start off with our first location, and that location is Australia. It's believed that cats were first introduced into Australia in 1788, and it's believed that they first became feral around Sydney in 1820. Since then, they have become a major problem, and they have now spread across more than 99% of Australia's land area. There are an estimated 7 to 11.2 million cats across Australia, and these cats have had a major impact on Australia's native wildlife. Every year in Australia, cats kill over a billion mammals, almost 400 million birds, 609 million reptiles, and 93 million frogs. Since their introduction, cats have contributed to the extinction of at least 22 endemic Australian animals, and this number could rise in the future. One of the only benefits of having these cats in Australia is that they prey on other invasive species, but the negatives far outweigh this positive. It's believed that Australia needs stronger laws, policies, and programs to protect its wildlife from cats, and there are a few species that are currently struggling. Cats hunt many of Australia's native animals, and they also compete with its native predators. Adult wallabies are usually safe from cats as they are quite a bit larger, but sometimes their young are taken. By predating on young wallabies, they can have a massive effect on their numbers, but thankfully conservationists have come up with a way to help them. In 2015, researchers found that wallabies in one nature refuge in Queensland were suffering, and they came up with a way to help them. There were only an estimated 16 individuals in the Avocet Nature Refuge, and in total there were less than 500 in the wild. To help them bounce back, they put young individuals and nursing mothers in a predator-free enclosure, and they kept them there for three years. Once they were large enough to be safe from cats, they were released into the wild, and this strategy made a big difference. The wallaby population in the area more than doubled in three years, as it went from 16 to 47. This technique is known as head starting, and it's been implemented in other locations across Australia. Similar techniques should be used across the world to help protect native species from cats, and hopefully there will be more success stories in the future. For our next location, we will be heading over to Cuba, and we will be taking a look at one very distinctive crocodile. The Cuban crocodile is a small to medium-sized crocodile, and it's endemic to Cuba. It's only found in two locations across the country, and it's currently listed as critically endangered. There are only an estimated 3,000 to 5,000 left in the wild, because over the years we have hunted them to near extinction. It really is a shame that this crocodile is so rare today, as there are no other crocodiles quite like it. It has unique physical and behavioural traits, and it is the most terrestrial of all extant crocodiles. They have longer, stronger legs than most crocodiles, and this means that they are a lot faster on land. They are known to get around by galloping, and it's a very strange sight to see a crocodile move in this way. They are thought to be more intelligent than most other crocodile species, but they are also known for being quite aggressive. You'd think it would be impossible for cats to have an effect on these reptiles, but unfortunately it seems like they are. 
If a cat was to get too close to an adult Cuban crocodile, then it would be game over for the cat. But it seems as though they like to predate on their young. One breeding farm on the edge of the Zapata Swamp is really helping these animals to bounce back, as they release around 500 baby crocs into the swamp each year. All the way back in 2022, the farm reported that they had lost around 145 four-month-old crocs. It was clear that the animals had been predated on, and evidence suggests that feral cats were behind the attacks. Feral cats in the area had been seen feasting on baby crocs, and when they removed some feral cats from the area, the number of baby crocs lost went down. It really is surprising that cats can have an effect on such a large animal, and it's possible that there could be similar cases such as this around the world. Thankfully, the situation in the breeding farm seems to have improved, and hopefully the Cuban crocodiles will be able to bounce back in the future. For our final location, we will be heading over to New Zealand, but strangely, we won't be focusing on any species in particular. Cats were first introduced into New Zealand in 1769, and 50 years later, there was an established feral cat population. The cat's arrival was disastrous for the entire New Zealand ecosystem, as New Zealand had very few native land predators. This meant that it was a safe space for many bird species, and plenty of flightless birds had evolved here. These birds were easy prey for the cats, and unfortunately there's a long list of extinct birds in New Zealand. Cats and other introduced predators are the main reasons behind these extinctions, but it's not only birds that they target. Cats will target native insects such as the wetters, and they'll even hunt many of the native lizards too. This really is a shame as New Zealand has been a safe space for many species, and as it was isolated from the rest of the world for so long, it has a large number of endemic species. From 2019 to 2020, a study showed that up to 20% of monitored kia were killed by feral cats, and unfortunately they like to target another group of iconic birds. As I've covered in a recent video, penguins love New Zealand. It's a safe place where they can lay their eggs and raise their young, and they even go as far as venturing into the rainforests. Because of cats and other introduced predators, New Zealand has turned into more of a dangerous location for penguins, and sometimes cats will directly prey on them. Thankfully, the attitude towards keeping cats in New Zealand seems to be changing, and hopefully this will be good news for the native animals. If you have a cat, it's important to be a responsible owner, as these predators can have a massive impact on native animals. If you think that there are any other cases or stories that I should have included in this video, then let me know down in the comments below. But for now, thank you for watching, and until next time, goodbye.